I will compare the power generation of a dual axis tracker versus a ground mounted solar system. I will show you how many extra panels you need on the ground mount to match a tracker's output. And I will also show you which one is the cheapest. And you might be surprised. The tracker I'm using is one of the most popular models I found. Since many of you are DIYers, this model is a practical choice for comparison. The tracker can accommodate 6 100 watt panels, totaling 600 watts. We will call this setup Test A. Test B will be a 600 watt ground mounted installation, facing south. Since we are off the grid, I will optimize the angle for the ground mount for winter, which represents the worst case scenario due to the low sun angle. Let's head over to PV Watts. This is a solar simulation tool free to use, based on local weather reports. We will specify whether we have a tracker or a fixed ground mount. For this test, I will use Houston, Texas as our reference location. While the location is important, our main focus will be on the performance difference between the two setups throughout the year. The dual axis tracker generates a total of 1169 kilowatt hours per year. The ground mount system, which is angled at 40 degrees, generates 855 kilowatt hours per year. The difference in energy production is 314 kilowatt hours, which is a 27% difference with the tracker. This is expected, as we know trackers capture more solar energy. I know some of you are curious to see the difference in summer. I repeated the same calculations, adjusting the angle of the ground mount system for summer, and we get 23%. Not that much of a difference with winter. Let me know in the comments, did you expect to see a 30% difference? Now, let's see how many more panels you would need to add to the ground mounted system to match the tracker's output. On the left is 600 watts on a tracker we had previously. On the right, 900 watts. So, by increasing the ground mount system to 900 watts, we achieve the same solar energy capture. Let's move on to the interesting part. The cost breakdown. The two axis tracker will cost you $550. Six 100 watt solar panels, $366. For a total cost of $916. Racking for the ground mount is $240, which are two 120 racks. Nine 100 watt solar panels will cost you $549, for a total cost of $789. Some people might prefer to make their own racking, but I have included it to make a fair comparison. We will add the ninth panel in the middle of the two racks. The ground mount system is $127 cheaper and to me offers better value. Although it requires a few more solar panels to match the tracker, it's more reliable with fewer maintenance concerns. A fixed ground mount can also be adjusted for different seasons, making it more efficient. However, if you limit it by space, a tracker might still be a good option, but for most, the simplicity and reliability of a ground mount outweigh the benefits of a tracker. Would you prefer a tracker over a ground mount system? Let me know in the comments. Let's see if there is a difference between a tracker located in Anchorage, Alaska and one in Ecuador, which is close to the equator. In Anchorage, we have a fixed mount at the 71 degree tilt for winter optimization. The difference between tracking and fixed is 35%. You would need 1 kilowatt of solar panels on a ground mount to match the 600 watts on the tracker. However, I would still prefer the ground mount due to potential issues like freezing, which can stop the tracker from moving. And now for Ecuador. The difference between tracking and fixed is 26%, similar to what we had in Houston. You will need 
780 watts of solar panels to match the 600 watt tracker. Here are my thoughts. We have about a 30% improvement with a solar tracker. As we move further north, the benefits of a dual access tracker become more pronounced. However, issues like freezing and mechanical maintenance make trackers less appealing, especially in harsh climates. Why I would prefer a fixed ground mount? You would need to supply DC power to the tracker. Installation of a tracker is more complex and takes longer. Maintenance and spare parts might not be easily available. Trackers limit the size of solar panels you can install. In conclusion, while trackers can optimize energy capture, the added complexity and potential for issues make fixed ground mounts a more reliable and cost-effective choice for most off-grid situations. For more information about off-grid solar, I recommend getting my best-selling book about the subject. If you are feeling overwhelmed with off-grid solar, check this playlist. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.